Welcome back to my channel, it's Alexandria, back with another video. So in today's video, I am doing a Q&A video talking about the skincare and all of the lovely TMI questions that you were afraid to probably ask your mom, so. Also, this video is in partnership with Merit Beauty. I will talk about them more in the next clip. Merit Beauty is a minimalistic makeup brand. All their products are completely minimal. They're all vegan and cruelty-free. They sent me two of their lipsticks. One is in the shade Slip, and the second one is in the shade Minimalist. You can shop all of this in the link in my bio. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. This lash is bothering me like crazy, so if you see it, like, flicking up in the inner corner, I'm so sorry, but I have no control over it today. So the very first question is, I want to move in with my partner, but I'm scared to ask my parents, what do I do? So, in my opinion, I honestly think it's a good idea to move in with your partner before marriage. Honestly, because you get to see how this other person is, see if you actually like living with them. And it also teaches you how to work together, how to compromise. And I think those are foundational when it comes to building a relationship with someone, especially if you guys are really serious. If I were you and you really want to move in with your partner, I would genuinely have a sit down conversation with your parents and tell them how you feel. Because at the end of the day, you are old enough to make your own decisions and make your own choices and I think honestly parents at a certain age should respect that. I come from an Asian household, a lot of Asian parents do not feel that way, a lot of immigration parents don't feel that way either and I know my parents for a fact, they even have a problem with me living by myself sometimes so definitely have a sit down conversation but always remember that you are grown and you can make your own decision so the second question is i'm scared to go to the gynecologist for the first time what do i do in my personal opinion there's really nothing to be nervous about going to the gynecologist i know the very first time can be very nerve-wracking because you're feeling a little bit exposed down there because people are you know looking making sure everything's okay but it is a professional environment and there are female nurses as well that will be there for you and you can always bring your mom or your sister just to be there as like a support person Again, they'll be standing behind you so they won't be seeing anything, but it's very important for you to go, especially as a female, you know, there's some things that they have to check. I'm about to be 21 and I'm about to get my pap smear, so I honestly recommend if you are very nervous, ask your mom to go with you. She's not going to see anything unless you want her to, but yeah, nothing to be nervous about. What is your hair removal routine? So honestly, I don't like shaving. Um, I have waxed since I was little. My mom is an esthetician, so she would always get mad at me for shaving because she's like, you're gonna get ingrown hairs, you're gonna, you know, get this and that. But personally, I have shaved a couple of times. I've never gotten ingrown hair. As long as you do proper exfoliation, you should be perfectly fine. You can even get ingrown hairs when you are waxing too. And I know a lot of people don't like waxing because it's rough on the skin. I personally like hard wax. Um, during COVID, you couldn't really go get waxed at like a salon because they were all shut down. So I actually bought a hard wax kit at home and I actually hard waxed my underarms in my eyebrows and stuff myself so i like waxing how do i stop comparing myself and competing with other people so i am completely guilty of competing with other people and kind of comparing myself to them especially with social media with this day and age it's so easy to do and you necessarily don't mean to do it but you just you know you sometimes you feel bad about yourself because you see someone looking amazing you feel maybe ugly and you feel under the weather some days and it's okay to feel like that but it's not good to feel like that 24 7. so normally what i do to stop feeling that way is if i'm feeling really ugly or just under the weather i go do my makeup take some cute pictures if honestly i am feeling just you know very sad and feel like i haven't accomplished anything i look back on all the things that i have accomplished and honestly just be very grateful about it and another thing i like to do is kind of look myself in the mirror and do some positive affirmations like i am worthy i am beautiful i am only in competition with myself and i think everyone should only be in competition with themselves because again you are the person that's growing yourself those people on social media are not growing you let's just be honest but Honestly, if I'm feeling under the weather, I just write a journal about all the things that I look forward to that I plan to do with my life and things that I have honestly accomplished and things that just make me happy. How do I know when I'm being played? You will know. You will know. Look for those red flags. There are a bunch of red flags and sometimes it could be a billboard and you won't recognize it. And if you have really close friends that you know you can really trust and they notice some things about a guy or a girl that's like really bad and you just don't see it, listen to them. And especially, I'm gonna be honest with you, listen to your parents sometimes too. If you're at a young age and, you know, especially if you're a girl and your parents are telling you, um, I don't really like the fact that he's doing that or maybe this is bad. You should honestly just listen to them and just look for those red flags. A woman knows if you have a strong intuition that he's cheating or if like he's playing you, 
Honey, I'm sorry, you're probably being played. <laughs> The next question is, what do you do on days that you don't feel motivated? So me personally, I like to journal. I've journaled ever since I was a little girl. I just think, you know, it helps me with a lot of things on my bad days and my good days. So what I like to journal about is honestly things that I look forward to. I also have been taking up yoga. I used to be a ballet dancer and yoga was always my favorite thing to do after a ballet class. So yoga and meditation, most definitely. I also like to bake. So if you're feeling unmotivated and you're feeling unhappy, bake some cookies and put on a good TV show because trust me, it's awesome and it feels amazing, honestly. What is your preferred period method? So I actually like tampons and pads. On my heavy days, I like tampons a lot more because pads would kind of bleed through my pants in high school, but it's just between those two. I saw this hack on TikTok where someone actually like laid a pad down on like the part where you're supposed to, and then actually laid one horizontally like where your butt is, so it prevents leaking. So I wanna try that one day, cause and I'll tell you guys if it works or not, but I wanna try that. Um, I think eventually in the future, I might want to try a Diva Cup. I've heard great things about it, so maybe I'll try that one day. What is your preferred birth control method? So me personally, um, I was on Nexplanon for a while and then I switched to the pill. And I was mainly on it because of my acne and when I was growing up, I had like really bad cramps and things. So I was on a hormonal birth control just for that. As I got older, I noticed my acne was just getting worse and it wasn't really helping it. So I got off of Nexplanon and then I went on to the pill and then I gained so much weight if you've actually looked back in my old videos I, I look extremely bloated and that's from birth control currently right now I'm not on any kind of birth control because I just can't deal with the hormones it brings me to such a depressing place and depressing like state in my life and I just feel like a whole different person when I'm off of it I'll probably do another video on birth control to be honest with you but personally um, I think if you are going to have any kind of intercourse use a birth control use any kind of birth control that you feel comfortable with Personally, a lot of people just stick with um, condoms, so it's completely up to you. But personally, apparently I'm not on any kind of birth control and I don't know. I just don't think hormonal birth control is for me. You bring this part back in a relationship. So girl can't answer that question for you because I'm not good at relationships whatsoever. But in my personal opinion, when it comes to relationships, I feel like if you've been with each other for a long time and you're slowly losing that spark, figure out why you're losing that spark. Like, have you guys been hanging out together? Have you, you know, made time to prioritize each other? I know a lot of people who have kids tend to prioritize their kids over their relationship. So the spark kind of dies out a little bit. So I honestly recommend spending some time with each other, getting to know each other all over again and finding the reasons why you fell in love with this person and why the spark was there. And honestly, it just depends on you and the person. Are you guys willing to work on it to make it work? Or are you guys gonna, you know, just let it die? So honestly, that's up to you. And my opinion is just get to know each other all over again. I think that's the best thing you can do. All right, guys, those are all the questions that I have. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And I'll be back with another video. Bye. Baby,